Hello everyone, I'm the Nerdy Fool, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. Where we left off last time was right about to go into this cave to try and rescue Marina from wherever Auntie Ethel, the hag, is hiding in this room. But before we do that, I was struggling with the fact that my party is half dead. We have run out of rest. It's not allowing us to rest here. And I wasn't confident I could climb all the way back out through all of this poison fog to get to safety. So I decided to look up options. I don't like looking up guides, trying to figure out cheap ways to get through situations. But I just didn't see a survivable way of going forward. So I wanted to see what my options were. And I found a couple of things that are interesting. So first, I completely misunderstood these vents. For whatever reason, I in my brain was thinking vent is in something that draws the air in. Like to vent a poison out. And so some way to turn this on to vent out the poison. It's obviously the vent that's blowing out the poison. So, oh, the correct thing we are supposed to do, which I should have figured it out, is take, say, these heavy stones, or apparently any object, and throw it onto the vent. And that will just cover it up. So then we can safely go through. So, I could do that to cover up all these poison things to slowly sneak our way all the way back out of this house so I can rest and then run all the way back. But that sounds kind of tedious to me. So we'll use that as a proof of concept to say that I could have gotten out that way if I wanted to. But instead we're gonna just go the quicker route. Which will also show you something you may not know about. So we're going to I don't need any go to group now. stealth don't waste a step. and try and sneak into this room. The goal will be to hug this wall and hopefully avoid being spotted by Marina. Or I think the hag is back here. I'm not exactly sure where. We're just going to follow this wall carefully and stay out of sight. Prime spot for an ambush. Okay. We're succeeding at our perception. You just keep looking over there. So we've got this nice door over here. That's where we're heading. I guess first we'll check the various items. Sylvan stone. What are you? Because you look fancy. Uh, no poisonous slime blob is not what I'm looking for. Sylvan stone. There you are. You. Uh, it's, oh, it's an extract. So this is something we use for alchemy. Oil of diminuate. Dimin. Diminution? Diminu. Shrinking. Why can I not think of that word? <laughs> it's like diminutive, but diminu diminution. I don't know. For whatever reason, my brain's not putting together that word. Found where the Feywild touches the material plane. These crystals are warm to the touch, as if they've been basking in the Feywild's ever-setting sun. Okay. Cool. Makes sense that they would be in a location next to a hag, which is... Obviously tied to the Feywild. We will continue sneaking in here. And right here, we have a mushroom circle. Now, mushroom circles are typically in the Feywild ways to get, I guess, to and from the Feywild to the material plane or travel around the Feywild, the portals. So if you're in the Feywild and you see a ring of mushrooms, or potentially if you're in the material plane and you see a ring of mushrooms, it may be a portal from one location to another. Ugh, I hate swamps. The place reeks. 
probably full of blood suckers as well. And now we've you wound me. Walking on air. What is that? Successfully use a fairy ring. Okay. Sound like we got another one as well. Not sure. But there we are. We are now outside safely. And so we can now go to camp. So a bit cheap, but the game not allowing me to stay or to heal and rest, I also find cheap. So I'm just going to go with it. We'll just sneak back in and then start the fight the way we're supposed to. Wizards of Waterdeep has updated. All right. First, I'm going to go around and talk to everyone. There's probably not going to be anything besides Gale. So if I'll cut out anyone who doesn't have anything new to say. May the darkness protect you. I can't help but feel you and I might have missed a chance to connect, to truly connect. I am thinking about trying to romance Shadowheart. So Yeah. I think I know what you mean. There's an undeniable rapport, and yet we haven't made time for each other. Time alone. Easily remedied, if you like. I know a place. I'd like that. Just lead the way. Not just yet. <laughs> Let's choose our moment. Some quiet night, when the others are asleep and there's no distractions. I'll come for you. Okay. Uh, anything else you want to say about what's happened to us? Fine. What's on your mind? Does it even need to be asked? We're beyond me merely liking you. I think I'm a different person owing to you. Wow. That's a strong opinion. Well, cool. We've been not having any major nighttime events in ages so at the ready. assuming nothing has happened to cause a different nighttime event that should just trigger when we go to sleep all right gail i'm guessing you need another magical item given that you are in pain arcane hunger Ooh, what is that Gale's spirit is being drained. He has disadvantage to constitution saving throws. Alright. You also have non-lethal attacks toggled on. So when... When I toggled it on for my party, did it toggle it on for my allies in camp, but didn't toggle it off when I... turned it back off for them? Will. Non-lethal attacks. And yet for all of us, it's off. <laughs> that is a strange way that they've chosen to handle that. My condition is worsening again. I need to consume some powerful magic or it may become volatile. That... It doesn't seem like, seem like it's been that long since we gave you an item. Like, I'm going to give him a magic artifact. But if this becomes, like, a, every day or two... We're going to go through magical items pretty fast. So we had this Bardic Inspiration hat that I don't need. Was there anything else we've picked up that I don't care about? We don't have a scimitar user. 65 gold versus 90 gold. So that probably would be a better choice. Shattered Flail is a mace. I don't have any mace users. And I don't really want an item that's going to drive me mad. But 190 gold, that's better to sell. What about you? We were keeping this one in the hopes that we get more lightning charge items that I can sort of stack up. So, uh, yeah, I think we're going to go with the Cap of Curing. Because a weapon theoretically has more use than an item that only works for bards and we don't have a bard. 
So you can eat this hat. You're welcome. Thank you. That glowy tattoo effect is really cool. I like how they've done that. It is a strange experience. Each time a new, I can't. Lost soul is spelunking through the darkness that is me, only to be sacrificed on the dread altar of the heart. Somehow the second artifact hasn't had the effect of the first. Somewhat relieved the discomfort, but I fear my hunger hasn't quite... Ah! Yeah, what's happening? Are you alright? Is there anything I can do to help you? Please tell me we didn't just waste a piece of magical equipment. Again, the snark you can choose. I'm not going to, but it would be fun to play... A character who was a bit more snarky but I assume that those choices would lower opinion or at least not raise them as much as if you're you know offering to help I'm gonna start with asking what's happening hopefully we can then ask if I can help but either way I want to know what's up Gail what's happening the magic isn't having the effect it should have it's not like the last time like a rainstorm that quells a forest fire it merely drizzles the embers still sizzle. The fire remains undefeated. I'm not certain what's going on, but nothing good. Please, I need to think. I need to retrace my steps to a glade of calm and think. Thank you for the artifact. A great deal of trouble it was, too. A great deal of trouble, indeed. Well, hopefully you get over whatever is going on, get feeling better. Yeah. And now we rest, get our spells and whatnot back. And once again, we will do our usual rounds. I'll cut out anything that's not new. Starion wants to talk, but we'll get to him in a moment. There you are, my friend. <laughs> are you drunk <laughs> that's what i was thinking at your service what happened were you attacked are you drunk i have drunk not alcohol of course a bear he took a little of my blood i took all of his i thought you didn't like animal blood you preferred humanoid blood sounds like a dangerous meal you seem happy no need to drink human blood then as long as you're leaving mine alone uh, you seem happy. No need to drink human blood? That is what I'm more curious about. You're comparing plonk to vintage wine. You can make merry with either, but they're not the same. But Cazador fed me rats and bugs. And when you're used to drinking from a sewer, even plonk is a marked improvement. Sounds delicious. <laughs> Does it matter? Blood is blood, isn't it? He's already told us it's not. Ransom, what did you do to deserve that? This is not a good phrase. When, when someone has been victimized, when someone has gone through trouble, asking them what they did to deserve it. Like, assuming what Astarian has told us about his situation is accurate, or, which we assume it is, then he was clearly a victim. Whether he'd want to call himself a victim, because victims often don't, but to t ask him what he did to deserve that is just not good. Uh, so I'm just going to go with sounds delicious. <laughs> it was exactly as appetizing as you'd think. Still, that was the past. I'll never have to grovel for him again. True, you can start over. You can be better than what he made you. True. Maybe not, but you'll grovel before the Mind Flayers if you keep using the Tadpole. Is he using the Tadpole? You sound very sure. I know we have had the option a couple of times to use the Tadpole, but I've typically turned it down. Not always, but typically. I don't know of anyone else in my party that has noticeably been using the Tadpole. So this keep using the tadpole seems strange. But I think in general, 
I'm going to try and build up my party members to be better than how we found them. Because as I said, like early on episode one or two, when I was talking about the various party members, you, they're all a little bit dark, a little bit broken in some way or another. And so I'm hoping, I assume there's some sort of good ending that they each have for their own personal quests. And so I'm hoping to kind of build them up, help them be better than they were. So I'm going to go with, true, you can start over. You can be better than what he made you. Exactly. I can be better than him. Stronger. More powerful. More... Oh. You meant... Be <laughs> kinder. Pet bunnies, that sort of thing. Yes. I have no objection to being nice, of course. Once I have the power to bend others to my will. <laughs> I mean, it is, in some cases, easier to be nice when you're from a position of power where you don't have to worry about... Uh, yeah, like when you're in survival mode, you don't always have as much choice to be as nice as you might intend to be, though Astarian doesn't seem like he would naturally be nice if his situation allowed him to be, at least at current. You think power lets you do anything free from consequences? You're free now. That's what matters. We're not powerless. The tadpoles are quite the asset. True. We don't really know how to use the tadpoles. We recognize that they have power. And people in power are wanting to get to us or get to our tadpoles. So clearly, they're important. We haven't yet figured out how or why. But yes, having power doesn't make you free from consequences. Well, yes. You can't look at the world and tell me I'm wrong. The strong of a duty to protect the weak? Uh, if I'm going like a straight, good, lawful good kind of character, that would be the statement. Like playing a paladin or something. Power corrupts, you do well to remember that. Careful, there are heroes about. I'd hate for them to get the right idea about you. <laughs> there aren't any great answers here if you're not necessarily trying to play the super good hero. And I'm intending to be more... somewhat neutral. I guess I am playing good. But willing to take more questionable choices than just always doing the good answer. He'll hate this answer, though. The strong of a duty to protect the weak. That's not his mentality at all. Like, I like this one. Uh, but no, I'm just going to go with it because none of these are necessarily... Yeah, none of them are really the answer I want, which would be more of... that it's sort of a mixture like not everyone who is strong uses it and abuses it many do but not all and so if you have power you can choose your path you don't have to abuse it but yeah the strong have a duty to protect the weak we'll go with it <laughs> They're doing a piss poor job then true the strong had two centuries to pluck me from torture but no one came. No. It was the Mind Flayers that rescued me. Also true. They gave me a gift. The strength to take my own freedom. I'm embracing this power. You should too. Well, it hasn't necessarily given me any major benefits. So, for him, it's been a huge change in his life. He can go out in the sun, he's no longer tied to... His master, he's gained a ton of freedom. So he obviously sees it as this huge boon. But for me, what has the tadpole done? I can read the minds of my allies somewhat. Uh, I can enforce my will on followers of the absolute if I choose. That's about it. So 
I don't yet see the giant benefit that he's seeing because I wasn't in that bad of a spot beforehand. Okay, so we finished our rounds of talking to everyone. So let's go to sleep. Auto select, what do you got for me? Uh, you've chosen 80 and it doesn't include my owlbear egg. I am fine with that. How many camp supplies does it think we have? A reasonable amount still. Yeah, it seems like it's found all that food that went missing before because now we've got eight of these packs again. I don't... I'm not going to keep harping on all of the supplies that randomly vanished. They seem to be back. <laughs> it seems to be the perfect night to spend a little time together. Just you and I. Assuming you haven't changed your mind, of course. Lead the way. You made it. Come here. Sit with me. What do you have in mind besides the bottle that is? I wouldn't dream of missing it. Do you think I wouldn't show or drain the cup in one swallow? Um... Did you think I wouldn't show? Lots of people make promises. Few keep them. Well, to begin, I think a toast is in order. Any suggestions? To victory, to survival, to us, to friendship. Like, the sappy romantic option would be to us. I don't know if Shadowheart would want that. To friendship, in some ways feels better, but it also could be taken as a friend zone kind of thing, but I doubt it. Might be fine. I think I might go with either victory or survival. She would probably like to victory, but she might also say something to the effect of, we haven't secured our victory yet. But it's a toast hoping for victory, maybe? Or to survival, again, a hope of survival. Maybe to victory. That is the goal, to overcome whoever did this to us, as well as the various other problems that we've been dealing with. To victory. Dominant, self-centered, savoring another's loss. I like it. <laughs> to victory. Doesn't surprise me. Not at all. Now tell me something about yourself. And no tadpoles, dragons, marauding goblins or anything like that. Something about you. Something about me? I'm surprised you cared. No. Uh, speak of dedication to your clan above all else. A life of honor and duty that supersedes even blood. Share a little memory from growing up in Baldur's Gate. There are other things we could do besides talk. Persuasion you first. I could try that. But she's already told us quite a bit about herself. She probably would appreciate us. So... Definitely not. I'm surprised you cared. That's just kind of harsh. Probably either the Baldur's Gate or the Dragonborn. So... I'm going to go with the Dragonborn option because it's a special race option. So speak of dedication to your clan above all else. A life of honor and duty that supersedes even blood. I can respect that sort of loyalty. It's not all that removed from what was instilled in me. Don't stop now. Not just as things are getting interesting. Not sure what else to say. Persuasion, your turn. I insist. A little... Give and take is only fair. Or we should head back. Um, do we go with the persuasion? I don't really see any value in conversation of just saying I can't say anything else. So I suppose we will try and get her to open up a bit more. Come on, Shadowheart. Can't you cast guidance on me? <laughs> Fine. Still succeeded. Don't laugh, but I'm not quite sure I have anything to share. When you worship Shard, secrecy is everything. We'll sacrifice our own memories when ordered to. 
a lot of the little things now lost to me right now. Do you think your memories will ever come back? Wrong, you like orchids and can't swim, you told me once. Drinking wine won't help. That's a convenient way to avoid the question. Um, I think I like the night orchids and can't swim. There's something... Like, I'd be curious to know her thoughts on whether she thinks her memories will come back. Whether that matters to her, what her thoughts on it are, etc. But also just showing that you've listened and that you care is super valuable. So, wrong. You like night orchids and can't swim. You told me once. I did. And you remembered. You're sweet. There's still plenty of wine, and the whole night is ahead of us. Nearly light. The others will be awake soon. Look into her eyes. The others can wait. I don't want this to end just yet. Or we should get back then. I'll look into her eyes. What? You're beautiful. I'm just checking for signs of seramorphosis. <laughs> uh, we'll go with the you're beautiful. I know. But you're sweet to notice. <laughs> Thank you for last night. I hope there'll be more to come. My pleasure. There's no need to thank me. Um... These seem roughly equivalent. Probably not going to go with there's no need to thank me. I'll just say... Ah, uh, I don't know. Hope there'll be more to come. Me too. She trails off. You read an invitation in her eyes. Kiss her. You know if you want something, I think you should take it. Or let the moment pass. So, do we kiss her, or do we encourage her that she should kiss us? We'll go in for it. Kiss her. Approves. Ha! <laughs> well, I think we've officially started the Shadowheart romance. didn't hurt, did it? Why would it? No far from it, the pain was worth it. What pain? Or a little tingle. I'm confused what pain was supposed to have been there. Because the fact that we can comment on it is strange. I'm just going to say no far from it. Good to know. For the future... I mean, Let's head back, if we must. We're the one with the mouthful of razor blades, so... <laughs> like, have you seen how sharp our teeth are? Obviously, teeth aren't very involved in kissing, but... Still. Shadowheart wants to talk, so we'll talk to her, and then head back to fight the hag. All's well, I hope. Of course, unless something's the matter. I want to talk about the night we spent together. No, of course, unless something's the matter. No. I just wanted to see how you felt after the night we spent together. When we talked and kissed. Night meant a lot to me, and I hope there's more to come. You first. Perhaps we got carried away. I value company, but not like that. Harsh. It was a mistake. We should forget it happened. Also harsh. Meant a lot to me, and I hope there's more to come. I hope so too. Though I'm not sure what kind of courtship will be afforded, given all that we're facing. But if you want to see where this goes, I do as well. You and I, we share something special. I think I want to talk about it. I want to talk about all that's happened to us. We should journey separately. Uh, I guess, yeah. Let's talk about it. Very serious of you. Go ahead. 
How are you faring? Admit it, you've never had a relationship quite like this one, have you? I don't know if she would remember if she has. We'll just say, how are you faring? It's strange. I've been dwelling on what I told you before about wanting to become a Dark Justicia. But perhaps I should be content with my lot. I'm already blessed to have you at my side, after all. I don't know if that's a healthy way of viewing things. If there's a goal you've wanted since you were a child, to say, no, I met a great significant other, so I am I should be content with my lot and just drop my lifelong goal. No, you should find a significant other who's going to help you achieve your goals. So... Yeah. I don't know if I agree with that. I don't necessarily think that she should become a Dark Justicia because they're kind of terrible people, but I don't think she should want to give up her lifelong goal because of a man. So, yeah. Anyway, that's it. I'm gonna go get Longstrider on us from Gale, and then we will head out. Of course, I'll cut all that out, assuming I remember to. <laughs> Do vampires actually drink blood out of goblets like in the storybooks? Doesn't seem very fresh. Straight from the neck is preferred, but goblets are used in mortal company. They save on awkwardness. <laughs> we could share a drink some night, if you're curious. A nice red wine in your goblet, of course. <laughs> very kind of you. But I'm saving my best bottle for someone already. Ooh. Alright, where did this actually put us on the map? So it put us down here. Which I guess is somewhere we could have gotten to from up by the tea house if we'd probably jumped down a cliff. I assume. But after we deal with the hag, we'll just explore this area and then head on out. At least that's my plan. So first, sneak. So that we don't accidentally get noticed and we will look around this room after we're done press ahead. with the hag i guess let's toss in a quick save just to make sure we don't screw things up with this fight and before we go in I need to concentrate. so we can cast Bless. Can you guys stop moving around so I can click on you? So that way we don't have to waste a turn casting it in the fight. Since that's going to last for only 10 turns at my bad. No time for Danny. Waiting with bated breath. Uh, it, why are you not sneaking anymore, Shadowheart? There we go. Light on my feet. Might have just wasted a spell slot. I want to see how close we can get to the hag or to this control orb because I'm still not spotting oh never mind well that's a problem Not a perfect stealth roll, apparently. Are they back, even though I knocked them out? So if I didn't kill them... Well, we're screwed. <laughs> okay. Uh... Karlak, why are you not in combat? Thank you. So... Question will be... Is Mayrina actually hurt? Not yet. Uh, I can only... Click on the cage, I can't click on her. There she is. So you are not burning. It's just the cage. And the cage is going to be taking 1d4 damage each turn. 
So, an option would be to throw water on the cage. Because we have vials of water we've been picking up periodically. No choice but to keep going. Uh, I should probably have a bunch of them. Yeah, 14 of them. They're 14 pounds each. No wonder I'm always encumbered. <laughs> no, they can't actually be 14 pounds each. That's got to be how much the total weighs. Yeah. So they got to be a pound each. I refuse to believe otherwise. Yes, they're a pound each. So that's actually giving the total of the weight and gold for the whole stack. All right. Totally fine. Then that's not what's weighing me down. I was shocked. I was like, what? 14 sets of 14 pounds each? Anyway, back to the combat. So if I'm going to have someone throw water on her, probably we'll go with Shadow Heart because damage wise, she is probably my weakest. I don't want to have to kill you guys. You're also blessed? Who cast bless on you? So you are level 5, you have 145 health and 17 hit points. I preferred you when you had 5 health. So... What do I want to do to get rid of you? Could I thunder wave her off the cliff? And just end the fight? I mean, probably, actually. I mean, maybe not. But I gotta try it. Wonder if the gods are watching me. It's a bit of a terrible plan. So is the red saying she'll die? I would assume if she falls anywhere down there, it would be a problem. But red seems like it's more of a you're going somewhere you can't go. But also, I think down there in the water is also... I don't know, what's the difference between blue and red? So I hope it doesn't just say, oh, we don't know how to handle that, so she'll just succeed or something. I'm hoping that means that if she gets knocked off, it's just a guaranteed death. We're going to do it. Ah, saved. What was your check? So the DC was... 14 and she rolled she only has a plus three so she barely succeeded if she'd rolled a 10 or lower it would have failed so we have like a 50 50 chance of knocking her off every round too heavy to shove that's fair Well, would have been really nice. Didn't happen though. This is gonna feel good. Tarlac, can you get over here? Maybe. Let's see how far you can get just from where you're standing. So with just a jump. Moving. There you go. Next turn she'll be able to try and bonus action shove as well. And she might have a better chance of it because uh, she's a lot stronger. But as it is, reckless attack. Let's get some damage going. Miss on an 85%. Death's cold grip. Can you really not make it? Keep guessing. 
Walk as close as you can. I assume you're actually close enough to attack. You really aren't. You're like a millimeter away from being able to attack, apparently. <laughs> Fine. Cunning dash. Actually, I'm pretty sure if I use the bow, it's going to say... We don't have disadvantage for being in melee. No, it's correctly thinking you're not in melee. Okay. Cunning dash. Step tiny little bit closer. There. Now, stab her. With the sneak attack. And you again attacked with your... You use your main hand. Sneak attack. And then you attacked again with your offhand. But you definitely don't have dual wielding on. How do I get it so that I get to choose your action? I mean, I was probably going to have him do a second attack, but shouldn't be making that decision for me. Yeah, bless is already almost over. We've got three turns remaining. So much for peace. Mistakes were making that were made there. Finish this. All right, you. Uh, if I have you take those, and then I say I want you to throw. Uh, actually split. I assume you'll only throw one, but you can never trust games. So split those. I want you to throw water. So I kind of want to get it on her and the cage, if possible. Specifically the cage, I suppose. Do you count? You do count as being wet, so you can't be set on fire again, I think. Prevented from burning, resistant to fire damage, and vulnerable to lightning and cold. Hopefully she doesn't use lightning and cold. Alright, let's have you move forward. I should probably keep our group separate, because I think a couple of these guys had big area blasts of psychic damage. So... Probably should keep some distance between us. Leave me. Stop it. All of you. No, don't heal her. Well, that's a problem. I wonder if they have penalties to those wisdom saves. Because... Oh, that's the one that we accidentally killed, so she summoned them too. But yeah, last time we fought them, they succeeded like 50% of the time. And now they've been failing every time. Is there any way I can see which of you is the real one? Is this Ethel or an illusion? Are you all at 138? This one has bless and weapon enchantment. The others don't. Well now. You probably shouldn't have given yourself away that well. So... Do I... How do I want to handle this? Carlock, get over here. I want you to rage. Like, I like the idea of shoving. 
And I still do. So Rage gives advantage on strength checks. So I can have her Rage this turn as her bonus action. Then next turn possibly push her. And we'll have advantage on the check. Yeah. We can't shove its bonus action. So for now, get your attack in. Yeah, you gave yourself away. Um, Astarian, can you get over here? I'm assuming you can. Turn off dual wielding. So we'll get main attack in with a miss. Use our second, hopefully get the sneak attack. There it is. Then, do you count as a humanoid? I guess I'm not going to use the bite this turn. The plus one to his checks would be good for being happy. But the healing when we need it later is probably better. Yeah. Do you count as a humanoid? Race hag... Not sure, because I swear on us, if we go to, say, her, somewhere, there's a list of, like, a bunch of different categories. Tags. Baldurian, Cleric of Shar, High, Half-Elf, Half-Elf, Humanoid, and Shadowheart are a bunch of tags that apply to her, and so we know she counts as humanoid because of her tag. Can I not see the tags of enemies so that I can say with confidence this person is a humanoid. She looks humanoid. I would count her as humanoid. But we'll deal with that later. Yeah. At least we got the sneak attack in. Health wise you're slowly going down. And then I could still run off a bit since you're sluggish from that attack. So hopefully you attack Karlak rather than Astarian. Shadowheart. Anything you can do to help out with this situation. Probably just... Ooh, Guiding Bolt. What's your chance of hitting? Only 40%. Guiding Bolt would be nice because it would give advantage, which means if we had a Starion, he would get advantage on his sneak attack. Potentially more likely to crit on a sneak attack, which would be awesome. Or we could do Invoke Duplicity. No, that breaks Bless. Definitely don't do that. When Bless runs out in three turns, we could Invoke Duplicity, but if she's going to teleport around, we'll have to see how her attack pattern plays out. Because then it might not be good. But if she stands in place, Invoke Duplicity could give advantage to us while there. Old person, does it apply? Target must be humanoid. She does not count as humanoid. That's a simple way of checking. I think, because humanoid, I think, typically just means that, you know, stand on two legs, have two arms, a head, humanoid in shape. Humans, elves, dwarves, half-orcs, they're all humanoid. I would think she counts. Alright, so we could do a ranged attack, but we're going to miss. 55% or 40%. I think as much as it's a terrible 1 to 8 damage is just not good. Uh, it's our highest chance of actually hitting and therefore doing some damage. So, yeah. I don't think any of the others particularly seem relevant. Mirror image could also be fun. 
yeah, made the save. We had a 50-50 chance, more or less. I could have her move forward and attempt this. It's only once per short rest, so I can't do it all the time. Might as well, though. If we can pull it off, which we won't, but if we could, it would help. Yeah. No huge surprise there. Now us. Uh, oh yeah, we're frightened, so we can't move forward. Twenty-five percent. No, I don't have any good save spells, unfortunately. So we could go magic missile because it will just hit. Damage-wise, is nothing to write home about. Or blur to help ourselves survive. Which I think I might go with. Is it just attack rolls? So it doesn't help with save attacks against us. Okay. Still, we'll go with Blur. Make ourselves more survivable. And Karlak, you're done with your turn. She's moved Marina into the fight. That's a problem. And then the hag is teleported to one of the other hags, which in this case we still know exactly which one, and we will for two more turns. Yeah. Hopefully they keep casting things on her that points her out. We gotta figure out what we want to do about Mayrina because she's now extremely injured and has Curse of Regret which means she's gonna be taking stupid damage every turn. She's gonna die. Um, and that makes me a little annoyed. The fact that the hag teleported her right amongst us, and then one of the followers attacked her as part of our group with something that damages her every turn. Yeah. Not cool. Um, I don't know if this counts as you getting close enough to her to hit. Yes. Apparently it does. So go with a reckless attack. Cry about it. Your rolls have not been good. Uh, we'll shove afterwards. I'm hoping to get a star in over there. You can't get over there because everyone's in your way. Perfect. Who's injured? Oh, I should have possibly thrown a potion while Karlik was still standing there. That was a mistake because Karlik could have benefited from us tossing a potion into the group. That would have also hit Mayrina. Because I'd like to have Mayrina survive. But this is just... Impossible. Two to five psychic damage every turn for four more turns. And if she happens to teleport near us so that one of the enemies attacks, she just dies. So do I waste my turns trying to heal her? I mean, I'm going to. So... Let's heal up the two of them. Shadowheart's not hurt. 
Actually, Varric, can you... You can't get over there to join them. Possibly with a jump. Your bonus action is not really useful. So... Not enough movement. Seems like generally no. Because I'm going to be throwing the potion between them. So I don't think I can get Varric inside of that potion attempt. So throw your potion. Heal up the two of them. Do you have any sort of spell that can give her another save? I don't think so. I don't even know if that is a save ends. Deal dam- oh, she has to deal damage. Well, she's not going to. Yeah, she's hosed. She could save herself by attacking one of them, but she's just not going to. That's just annoying. Anyway, yeah. Path is interrupted. What? I just want you to throw it onto the ground. There. That is sadly your action. So I'll have you just move a bit closer. Then Astarian. And still not get over there because Marina's in the way. Come on. You are nothing but problems, Marina. You can't even jump around her. All right. He could jump here. Use up one of my bonus actions just to barely get in front of her. We need to keep everyone away from her because then she's less likely to get attacked. I could use a second bonus action to actually get up to her so that I could stab with my main action or I can just shoot my bow against that 45% and only get a single action anyway. Which I think is what I'm going to do. Not terribly surprised. With my last bonus action... Suppose I will Cunning Dash anyway. Which means I probably should have attacked with my sword. Because it's a plus one weapon. Yeah. Oh well. So you've done your stuff. Carlex, I think, taken her turn. Yeah, it's just Varric. Who should still take an action. And I assume our attacking her is still terrible. Yeah. I could jump up here so I'm not getting the low penalty. As dangerous as that seems. So we want to stay far enough away that no one is trying to uh, attack our group. Oh, I should have had a Starion pull back. There's no point in him being close since he didn't attack. I could attempt it to get... No, that's hitting a Starion, too. If I... did move a bit more forward... There. That hits the two of them and not my allies. Wait, are they going to try and tell me that that wasn't the real one, even though she had 
the spell effect on her. They all have Hag's Trickery besides this one. Huh. Alright, game. You win. Um, I need to pay more attention. As it is, let's pull as far back as we can to be less likely to get into a group attack. You pull farther this way for the same reason. What should I do? Shouldn't have brought Astarian to the rest of the group. Uh, please. yep, no, whatever. Let it ride. I won't. Good, good, good. Oh, well, Marina died, and I don't think that was in any way my fault. How many times can you cast Old Person? Because that's nonsense. been happening here so <laughs> okay so we let's open this up uh, there so shadow heart let's see you got blasted that's fine uh, they cast curse of regret you failed your fa saving throw I saw that so you got curse of regret then, at the start of your turn, you took psychic damage and fire damage because you were on fire and, I don't know, psychic damage for something. Was that the Vicious Mockery? No, that's what this was. No, that's Curse of Terror. Ethel cast Vicious Mockery, so that must be the Vicious Mockery damage. I wish they would have connected that. Particularly, Vicious Mockery was cast before we got the Curse of Terror. But we took the vulnerable damage for it. Then we took fire damage because she's standing in fire and on fire. Uh, you receive momentum because of your armor piece, whatever. Then you were hit for psychic damage from nowhere, as far as I could tell. Like... A bunch happened there where she just gained a bunch of damage all at once. Not really clearly stated where it came from. And also the fact that every single hag is able to cast Hold Person? What? And now... Do we know which one is the real one? We assume it's based on the hag's trickery, then you are the real one. And I don't know what to do about the fact you're nearly dead in a single turn from a vicious mockery and a bit of fire that just kept stacking up. Okay. I need help. And you guys are all stuck, so your turns are just over. Need to stay focused. And she's going to have to use her turn to stay alive. Wow. Ideally, you wouldn't be standing in fire, but walking over the fire is going to hurt you. Bonus action to get out of there. Then Cure Wounds is a second level spell on yourself. And that's all we can do. Eight hit points. That is not going to save the day. No, auntie. I did not realize that 
every one of the illusions can cast spells. Like, none of us as 5th level characters are going to be able to do that. All of us are dying besides Astarian, who is... Crap, there we go. Game over. Wow. Do I try it again? I think not. Um, that whole fight was total BS. The her. I guess we spent too long, too many actions trying to save Marina when she was doomed to die. So that was a mistake. I mean, I teleporting Mayrina next to us so that her followers could then do an area attack that would also hit Mayrina. Also, the fact that us saving her followers. I guess I should have just killed them. Like, I would feel bad about it, but now that they are going to get summoned in to attack us, I'm like, man, I wish I just murdered them. Because this fight would be a lot easier if they weren't around. I just assumed... Typically when you knock out an enemy... From what I saw in my testing of this game, which again was on a lower difficulty, so maybe things change, but when you knock out an enemy, they stay... knocked out. Kind of forever. Uh, I never saw one get back up to fight us. Granted, I didn't knock out very often. But okay, so we should have killed them. That's on us. Um, I think the only way I'm going to beat this is if I kill those three again. Don't put much focus into saving Marina. Then maybe we stand a chance. If I do, say, Magic Missile, if Varric is just there to pop all of the various uh, illusions to try and minimize how many we have to deal with while everyone else hopefully finds the real one and then focuses on doing damage. Maybe we'd have a chance. So options are we go back in, try this fight again as another brutal fight. But I'd prefer to attack first, like attack the minions, or what I'm leaning towards is that we just kind of bail on this for now, because there's, from what I understand, there's no time penalty for coming back later, as long as we're still within Act 1. So maybe we give up on the hag for now, we're just not strong enough. We instead check out the goblin camp. And then we come back here at some future point when we've gained a level or maybe two and give it another shot. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to leave here and just leave this for later. That making the decision. Yeah. So with that, we're going to end <laughs> this episode here. Next time, we'll head back out into the swamp, explore the areas around this cabin, and then head off somewhere else. So I will see you then.